You're very welcome back. Now, most of us will know that the few herbs and spices we keep in the kitchen can transform even the most ordinary dish into a culinary masterpiece. But did you know that as well as adding flavour, some of these have nutritional and even medicinal benefits? Nutritionist Heather Leeson joins us now. This time of year, Heather, the cold's coming in, you know, the flu's on the yeah. way, all the rest. You, the, the herbs and the spices that you have here can help in, in, in alleviating some of that. They certainly can, lots of them actually, and we're eating these on a regular basis. A lot of these you will have had in the last couple of days. I'm mm. sure the first one, garlic. Yes. I mean, everybody knows garlic and we love its flavour. We don't appreciate, though, how beneficial it is for our health. So garlic has been used for thousands of years as an antimicrobial, antibacterial, antiviral. It is even helpful against uh, some of these superbugs that we read about in okay. some medical studies. Uh, you need to be eating quite a bit of it though okay. to get the That's health benefit. That's what surprised benefit. me actually because we all consume quite a bit of garlic yeah, I suppose but yeah. uh, we should be taking at least one clove per day. Yeah one clove is what's recommended at least to get the health benefits from it and that's good for your heart as well so we know garlic helps to thin blood, helps to bring blood pressure down, helps prevent atherosclerosis, the hardening of the arteries yeah. as well but that yeah. is where you're getting up to at least a clove a day. Yeah, so a, clo a clove now is a bit one of, of these. that? One of these would okay, be a, not a the, clove. The whole bowl. No the not the whole bowl. Yeah, that, yeah. But actually if you think about it's not that hard. If you're having a stir fry, you can easily throw in uh, a bit of garlic, nothing wrong with a bit of garlic butter, adding it into different foods. And also, roasting the whole clove makes it much more palatable. I don't know if you've yeah. done that before, but all I did here was throw this in the oven when I was cooking something else, slice the top off, and you can see it's lovely and soft and it's much sweeter. Okay. And that just on top of a little bit of bread with something like tomato is absolutely delicious. Or use it, mix it with yogurt to make a dressing. So, yeah. actually, you can really crank it up. I think it's about being a little bit more inventive, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than adding it to the standard meals mm -hmm. that we make it's doing those extra yeah. bits and pieces and, and kids yeah. as well kids love garlic actually yeah. so start them young and one of the great things about all these as well is that they, they all taste great yeah. it's not like yeah. you're, you're having to swallow yeah. fish oils or something no there's no know. torture yeah. here yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just we're missing a trick i think yeah, not yeah. taking in more of them yeah. um, completely what we've heard loads about and, and there's a bit of a trend around isn't it turmeric yeah. turmeric that is the hot topic at the moment and that is what turmeric looks like it's bright yellow and that bright yellow color is coming from something called curcumin which is the active ingredient and that is a very potent anti-inflammatory. So lots of research, more than 6,000 research studies on the health benefits of turmeric and it's looking like it's just as effective for some conditions for inflammatory bowel disease and for other conditions like that, like yeah. arthritis where aspirin and ibuprofen are helpful that is going to help as well. So that does the same, it has the yeah. same sort of effect as aspirin or Anti-inflammatory, yeah. Okay. And if you think about it, lots of cultures like in India would be eating a lot of that on a very regular basis. So if you had a hard night out the night before and the brain was a bit <laughs> swollen from, from alcohol, <laughs> the pile of turmeric and uh, turmeric and... Well, I don't go. know, yeah. I think there's other things we'd be talking about now that might be more helpful, but it is yeah. really useful. People just don't know how to use it. Yeah. You can buy it dried and it's fine to throw into, say, curries or to throw in if you're cooking rice. This is what fresh turmeric looks yeah, like. Right. So it's a little bit like ginger and it's actually the same family. And for germ for turmeric and ginger, just peel off the skin by using a spoon rather than a knife. And then you can slice it into different dishes. And it's lovely actually as a tea as well. And I chopped some ginger and turmeric here, just peeled and sliced it, throw in a little bit of hot water, a little bit of lemon, and that makes a lovely tea. Mm. And that mm. would be good for... That's your uh, hangover cure, <laughs> Well, yeah, maybe throw in a little bit of mint. But if you've got a cold coming on, yeah. that would be absolutely amazing. And with turmeric... It's not very easy to us, for us to absorb the beneficial um, effects of it. So if you add in a little bit of black pepper, that makes a big difference. And that's how you traditionally use it in a curry as well. So the, 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 the black pepper uh, helps to, I suppose, activate what's in yeah. the, the, the turmeric. It makes it to... more bioavailable, up to 2,000% yeah. more available. So we absorb bioavailable. 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 Yes. Bioavailable. Yeah, yeah, bioavailable. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. You can throw the pepper in there as well. It's yeah. actually very nice. I had yeah. one yesterday myself. And can you buy it like this in this state in your local supermarket or is that more of a health food? It's probably, well, uh, some health food stores will have it. I got that in my lovely health food store in Rathmines, but you also get it in Asian stores and some okay. supermarkets. Okay. It's always beside but the But the dry ginger. powdered form is fine? It's fine. It's okay. absolutely just as good. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. as good. And yeah. then, of course, uh, we we're all used to gingerbread and ginger cakes and ginger, ginger biscuits. biscuits. Ginger biscuits. Yeah, ginger yeah. biscuits. Yeah. But, but ginger itself is another one of these uh, marvellous, uh, healthy, healthy options. Ginger is amazing for the stomach. Okay. Really, really good for nausea. So, night out, yeah. <laughs> the research actually is a little bit mixed on the night out, but you can certainly try it. But yeah. for things like pregnancy, I don't know if Anna, you felt nausea. I had a little bag, not on this pregnancy, on my first pregnancy when I had a little touch of uh, pregnancy nausea, uh, of crystallised ginger. Yeah. And oh. someone had that. told me about it. Did it help? Uh, absolutely, yeah, it really absolutely helped. Absolutely brilliant. And also nausea related to travel, yeah. uh, related to anaesthesia. Yeah. After an anaesthetic, some people feel sick, and also chemotherapy. So it can 
can be really helpful. Just settles the stomach and making a lovely ginger tea or sucking on something like crystallized ginger yeah. is great. Ginger biscuits, I mean, I made these ones here. There's healthy recipes on our website with, for healthy ginger cookies if you're brave enough to try them later. But yeah. uh, just using a little bit um, in your food is going to make a difference to help settle the stomach. Yeah, yeah. I, I love a shake of cinnamon on the top of my latte of a morning. Oh, you know. you're ahead of the trend <laughs> yeah. as well there. So, so uh, cinnamon itself is, uh, is, is what, what, are the, what are the benefits of that? Is, cinnamon is very helpful for blood sugar balance and we talk a lot about blood sugar balance. That's what a cinnamon stick looks like yeah. and you could use that to, to stir the tea. But it's got a lovely sweet flavour as well. So we know from research it's helping to balance blood sugar. It's helping us to use our insulin better, even for diabetics. And for people trying to cut out sugar, as we're often talking mm. about, it has a lovely sweet flavour. So if you are eating a natural yoghurt, you didn't want to put honey or sugar in, mm. a little bit of cinnamon would make it nice and sweet and flavoursome, yeah. even using it on dried fruit we're as well. well. See, great. Michael Noonan, we're getting around you now with this. Uh, you're bringing your sugar tax next month. We've, we've got cinnamon. We've, we've got, got cinnamon. We've got around <laughs> tax uh, and cinnamon. to porridge as well. Could you gorgeous. do that? Mm. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, anything. I mean, you use it in curries as well, but for sweet, it brings a lovely natural sweet flavour. And how do you break down the cinnamon stick or you just use dried cinnamon you would use that if you were using making a, a casserole or stewing fruit and you'd fish it out afterwards okay. you're yeah. still getting a lot of the flavor i tend just to use the dried cinnamon it's really inexpensive you get it absolutely anywhere in terms of you know the effectiveness of dried versus fresh and um, what sort of ratios do you need to use to get the effectiveness so of the, uh, the fresh and dried the dried is a little bit stronger in flavor mm. so you need to, it's probably one to three so one teaspoon of say dried turmeric or dried yeah. ginger would be the equivalent of three teaspoons of fresh okay. say grated ginger okay but the fresher is a little bit more active. So yeah. if you can go for the fresh, I would go for the fresh. But taking too much of it isn't going to be a bad thing in most cases, Heather, is it? No, it's not. Now, some things like garlic have anticoagulant effects. So if you had buckets and buckets of it and you were on an anticoagulant medication, it might have a little so impact. So a blood but, thinner yeah, of some sort. Like warfarin, but normally, warfarin. exactly. But normally, no, not at all. Not in the level that you would be eating in yeah. food. That's the difference between food and, I suppose, supplements yeah. and, and medication. Peppermint was your last one. Fantastic. I love peppermint. Now, that is brilliant for IBS symptoms. And actually, the British Medical Journal uh, recommended it as first line for IBS. So okay. for queasiness, but more so for spasms and cramps and that and wind actually as well. Mm -hmm. Really great. And you can just throw it into hot water, make a fresh peppermint tea after you're eating, especially yeah. after a heavy meal, and that will really help to settle things down. Mm. Peppermint oil as well, because of the menthol is great for getting rid of headaches. So you can buy peppermint oil and just rub it on your temples if you're or here if you're prone to headaches, and it can really make a difference to to calm them sim the symptoms Fantastic. down. Fantastic, yeah, excellent stuff, Heather. And uh, as I said again, it's tasty as well as everything yeah. else. So you know, yeah, yeah. No it's, it's, a, it's a win-win situation. Absolutely, all around, yeah. And the things mm. we can use and buy everywhere and use every day. There's Good. loads of recipes on our website. Lovely. as well. Heather, thanks a million for that. Good, Good to see you. Thank you, you. Heather. See you again soon.